everyone and welcome back to a, another how to Etsy business segment here with me Candy. I wanted to take you through building your own. I'm going to do specifically 3x3 three three stickers but you can do 5x5 uh, five five, anything that's the same circumference so bigger smaller it doesn't matter but i wanted to show you guys how to do this from home and uh the troubles i have run into with this so that you guys don't run into the same problem that i have if you are new here hello hi i am candy or candace and this is a place where i like to take you guys on my art adventures when i'm not working full time in the animation industry i haven't recorded a video um a how to video for you guys for a long time because while i was off uh, in between contracts, I recorded a lot, a lot of footage and I'm back. Uh, if you guys ever have any how to's that you guys would like me to work on, please, please, please let me know in the description box below. Also, let me know if you get to the end of my videos and stuff like that. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because that really helps me out a lot. I'm literally running out of ideas when it comes to DIYs for you guys, so please let me know different DIYs that I haven't done yet and ones that you would like. So without further ado, I would like to take you through building your own stickers. So let's do this. These are the images that I decided to go with. You can really pick anything that you want. It really doesn't matter. So let me run through how this works and how I ended up coming up with this template. So I'm just going to take this out of a group so that I can show you guys all the different layers on this. Um, and then I'm going to also close all these other layers so we don't have to have them open. All right, so the first thing that I did is I went on to Google and I typed in the type of sticker dimensions I wanted. So I wanted a three by three. And then this is what I got. What I would also suggest you do is take this, but then, um, open up a new file. So we're going to do new. And this is where information is so, so, so important. We are going to do inches. I'm going to do 8.5 tab tab by 11. I'm going to do 300 DPI as well. Or why is there a decimal? There we go. Uh, because we are going to be printing it. If this was just going to stay on the computer and you were going to use this as like a digital thing, there would be no reason to have your resolution this high, but because of what we're doing, we want a higher resolution. Bam. Okay, so let's bring on our little template here. We're gonna bring it on over to our new area here. And what I would suggest is making a new layer and going in here and making an ellipse. Now, the reason why I would suggest this is because you don't really know how pixelated this particular image is from the internet. And because of what we're doing again with printing, we want the highest quality possible here. So I'm going to suggest that you make something a little bit nicer than what is been provided. So um, it doesn't really matter if it doesn't fit the proper dimensions. You can try again and make this look a little bit better. That's gonna be good enough just for the time being. And I'm gonna hit G for fill. If you are using Photoshop and it's set to, here, let me bring this over because I realize I'm in the way. If you bring this over and you see that if you hit G, you get this gradient tool, you just have to hold down on the image here and hit paint bucket tool. And then all we need to do is fill it. Then from here, we want to unselect this. So you can just hit V and, or sorry, you can just hit M and then unselect it. What we're also going to do is get the size relation better. So hit control T when you have V selected, hit Control T and make sure you have the proper layer selected. So Control T does this and we're going to get this to be the proper dimensions now. So we're just gonna do this. 
and we're gonna shift it over just a little bit. Perfect. Now we can turn off our template. So I'm gonna call this um, Pi Res Template. So we can get rid of this template here. Then from here, we're going to make a new layer and I'm going to bring over what I want as my uh, little under layer image. So this is what I ended up um, using because I've used this before in all of my other templates uh, when it comes to my old style of business cards as well as what my old sticker sheets look like. My friend ended up making this for me, so that's why I'm using it. Um, so the cool thing with this is all you need to do is just right click over, let me make this a smidgen smaller so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's make this smaller here. Okay. So you just need to right click on the image here and you need to go create clipping mask and bam. And I've showed you guys how to do clipping masks many times before. I absolutely love, love, love clipping masks. And then the cool thing is you can move it around still so that it works perfectly for what you're looking for here. So something like that I think looks really nice. Then I'm going to want to bring over the image that I had. So the other things I had here was the text as well as a drop shadow, my little image, and that's it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring over my image. So this would be your images from, um, from your iPad or other drawings that you want to bring over. So obviously you want this to be on its own individual layer. Um, try and get it at the biggest size you possibly can because I'm, I'm reusing this. Uh, you can kind of tell that it's a little pixelated already. So this isn't super ideal. So I would suggest grabbing a clean copy of this that you have somewhere. So I'm just gonna make this the size, again, it's best to have it as big as possible and scale it down. Scaling up is not a good idea. So if you find yourself doing that, I would suggest finding a better resolution or redrawing your image at a higher resolution. The other things I'm gonna bring in is my Candyware logo and I will show you guys how to make the candyware.com little uh, shape like that. So I'm gonna bring this because it, I'm just reusing it. We're just gonna plop this on top here. We're gonna bring this down. Maybe we do need to shrink it a little bit. Maybe I did make it a little too big. So I wanna put a little drop shadow underneath my, my little lollipop here. So you just need to make a new layer and you could just hit this button right down here if you need a new layer. And I'm going to again use my ellipse marquee tool which is on the side here, this little guy. And so what I'm gonna do is just do something like that and I'm going to find a color I like. So I'm going to pick something like this and what you want to do here is just fill it so G and then fill um, and then we can always adjust this if we don't like it so then you hit V and you can move it around so we're gonna do something like that also you can adjust it if you think that maybe it's a little wobbly or anything like that and then I so let's deselect so we don't have the marching ants going around. If you hit M and then just hit anywhere on the page, it will deselect for you. I'm going to change the opacity so it's not so dark. Or you want to be able to see through it a bit. So I'm going to say something like that. And you know what? I'm not digging this color, so let's, let's choose something else. I want to choose something darker and a little bit more muted. So um, G again and let's hit fill. There we go. I like that more. From here, let's make the uh, beveled or the viewed, um, dot com. So I would suggest always, whenever you can, put either your username at least and or a URL just so that people can still find you because just putting a business card is not enough. Putting your username on everything absolutely possible, you're setting yourself up 
for a better return buyer because they could be giving it as a gift or something like that. So I'm gonna use brown specifically and I'm gonna just write candyware.com. It is too large. And then from here, I'm gonna just place it roughly over here. And then still while having the, um, the text tool selected, I'm going to highlight this and we are going to change these settings here. So I want this to be arc lower. So you could try that. There's a lot of different ones you can try. I'm actually going to just choose arc in general and we're going to change the bend to be the other direction. I'm gonna come back to that. We also should make sure that the text is in the very middle and then we can come back and really hone this. So you can change the distortion if you want the horizontal distortion or the vertical distortion if you want something like that. Honestly, I'm looking for just bend. I want a lot of bend in this. I wanna be able to just put it there and make it look like it fits. And then once you're happy with that, you can just hit V and place it. I would change the font, honestly. I wouldn't use this kind of font for this. So definitely play around with the different types of fonts. And I, I honestly would have more bend. I, I would go all the way with the bend in, for this particular one. And then hit this and move it up again. And then I would obviously make it a lot smaller than this. But this is just to give you an idea very quickly as to how I set these up. Um, so there's that. And then from here, you guys saw all the other ones that I created as well. So let me just turn this off. So here are the other images I ended up creating. But again, th these ones are the lower res versions because I ended up shrinking and growing them. And like I said, biggest first and then make them smaller. Don't run into the mistakes I made. So from here, let's bring it into the Cricut design space. All right, so from here, we are going to add in our little stickers. So what I ended up doing is I had them all separately saved. And so you wanna make sure you save them as a PNG and also that there is no background behind them. So that is how I got all of these here. So then let's go back to our page. And what I like to do here is let me actually detach this so I can show you guys. So what I ended up doing is just bringing in one of each and then making a row of all of them. And I want this to be able to fit on uh, eight and a half by 11. So that being said, I what I ended up using for this to make sure everything was scaled accordingly is if you grab the top two and you hit a line, what's awesome is you can do either center a line or I ended up doing top a line for that. And then I grabbed these two on the side here, or let's grab these two first and then let's, let's align bottom. And then you can grab the two on the side here and also a line on the side just to make sure that everything is nice and aligned all together. And that is what I did here. Once you are happy with your stickers and how everything looks, let me zoom out a bit here. Don't forget to select everything and attach. Make sure that your image is no bigger than 9.25 because I always go by height because it's the easiest. And then from here, you're going to hit make it. And just make sure everything looks good here. We're gonna hit continue and then you will send to the printer and then cut it. I personally like to use gloss sticker paper. 
but that is just my choice. You can also see how I end up using these stickers in my older video on how I package my Etsy orders, so I hope you guys will take a look at that. If there are any other DIYs you guys would like me to work on, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you got this far, I don't know if there's actually a sticker emoji. If not, find an arts and crafts emoji that you like and toss that in the comment section below. And yeah, please, please, please let me know what you guys would like me to work on next because sometimes, you know, after a while, your girl's running out of some ideas. But I hope to see you guys on the next studio vlog or next DIY, and I will see you later. Goodbye!